welcome back to the channel. I am Ben with KCT, and last time in our little series of So You Want an AR-15, we kind of discussed the M4 Drew style of the AR-15, and again, this is the kind of more minimalist uh, set of more as you can see, and things like that. The plastic handguard, real short amount of space for the handguard, so obviously this is, as a civilian, you're probably only running lights, maybe some laser stuff, but um, the military has all sorts of shit bolted on there, and then obviously the front sight post out to the barrel. Uh, again, it's a lightweight barrel, but whatever. And so this gun is really nice and light. Uh, it's really, really compact. And it's like the six, same 16-inch barrel that you'd have on other guns. But um, it handles really, really nice, really easily. Maybe 6 pounds, 7 pounds out of the loaded mag. So really nice and light, even with a complete rail system, even with optic and light. So, but this is as close as you're probably going to see to a military-type gun without just straight-out copying it. Yes, I know that when you buy a lot of these things, they come with a round hanger and heat shield things. And then, I don't know. But... This is about as close as I got, anyways. So, now that we've gone through that refreshing little thing, let's take a look at something else. And I realized watching the highlights of the last video that I was talking insanely fast because I'm trying to get through this and get back into the air conditioning. Well, I have a, a fan up here now, so I guess I don't have that excuse. So, hopefully, it's not too loud for you guys. All right. So, go with this thing. I hope I don't. So now what we're going to take a look at is the, and I don't even know what they call this, I'm going to say it's like civilian improved AR. Um, it's a, oh, but my middle spec, people are going to start freaking out, oh, it's not, you know, it's civilian, whatever. Um, it's, it's an AR that has an upgrade from what you see on a standard M4 type, because most ARs or M4s, whatever, don't have a, a rail system like that, and so on and so forth. So, we'll just be real quick about this, and I want to take a quick moment. To take our sponsor today, uh, Breek Arms. Go ahead and go to their website, breekarms.com. Take off 10% with my code, Cheeky Breaking. Capital C, everything else in all case. All right, so I got that all on the way. We will go butt to tip uh, as we are not grand thumb. And he's got that banded. So, um, all right, so what we have here is a little bit of a bigger stock than what we saw um, on the other one. Now, again, this is on a V711 system, 11 position tube. Uh, they gave me this years ago to review, and if you ever thought about how cool a stock would be with 11 positions, yeah, it's that cool. So that and this make a match made in heaven because the heavier um, ACS, is ACS? Um, yeah, it's ACS. The ACS here is different. It uh, works really well because it locks right in with this friction lock. And you can see here, you know, stop in there, lock it right there, and it doesn't move. Where there's a little bit of wobble in most uh, AR type stocks. So, 11 positions, can't say no, can't say no to this. Uh, a great combo of match made in heaven. So, guys, when you're able to kind of change things around yourself, you kind of find out, okay, well, what do I want? Well, that was a really minimalist build. Do you want something that's minimalist? Do you need something that's super light, or do you want something that's actually like really comfy? Like, this is just crazy, crazy comfy for me. I love it. It just feels really, really good in the hand. But again, time and money are either your friends or your enemies. So moving forward from that, we have a cutie on the plate there. And also, we have cuties on the stock here. And I remind on the outside because I will tend to run my sling on the outside. However, I'm running the Boxer Tactical uh, Omni Sling right now. And so everything that's on this gun is attached without cuties. So that makes it kind of nice. See this little weight you can see up here. The little Kevlar cord that attaches it there. So. Again, this is more of my review gun, and this is a gun that um, is more set up for competition use. So there's stuff in there that you'll see that you probably don't need, but this is at least to give you an idea of where to start. Like, I, and depending on how much money you have, and I know people will just, oh my god, I can't believe you see this. I've got decent quality from, from Palmetto State. Um, I've got a couple uppers from them that are just flawless, and you know, maybe they have problems now, I don't know. But you can get a really good deal on like one of the blind uppers with everybody like this, because what happens is a lot of newer shooters, they think, let's go the cheapest route and I can add stuff later. Oh, you're going to add stuff later. 
<laughs> you absolutely are. Uh, it's the uh, nature of the AR beast. You will add stuff. But the thing is, is that now we have to go ahead and replace, you know, for the M4 type, get replace the hangers, the front side base, the gas block, just to get a new free flow hang hangard on like this. And you can just start like this. You don't have to have one that's this long. I mean, this is pretty big. That's a 16, oh, it's a 15 inch on a 16 inch barrel. Um, but, you know, if you are a person that likes to have room to mount a lot of stuff, this is really, really nice. Uh, I put a lot of grippy pads on there, little things to hold my hand on there. Um, modified some of the XTMs. Those are nice. You'll see more about those later. And yeah, so it gives me a lot more options to grab and do what I need to do versus having to kind of hold back here, you know, to just deal with what I have on the gun. Um, but again, this is something that is just you, the product improved is what you want. Um, again, if you were going to start with something, I would say start with either a Picatinny rail all the way to the front or um, an M-Lock rail with Picatinny on it. I would not go for Keymod right now. So far, it's not not the time of the system between a lock and key mod and Picatinny is going to be here forever. So you can't go wrong with either one of those. Picatinny is probably going to be heavier, but you know, that's up to you. So moving forward, um, we have the wonderful, wonderful, and I don't just say that because they sponsor the channel. I say that because I bought a ton of these before they did. The Warhammer charging handle from Greek Arms. It is an ambi handle. It is beautiful. It looks like it sticks out very, very far on either side. In truth, it actually doesn't stick out very far. So. If you look at where the optic is, that really doesn't stick out very far from the receiver. It's just far enough that you go ahead and reach back, grab it from either side, and it works out just great. Now, I moved over all to Andy handles. I was uh, using all the BCM Mod 4s, and I love those things, and they're awesome, but I just didn't like their Ambi offerings, and they were just getting too chunky. And the new one I bought um, has it doesn't look anything like the old uh, BCM Volvo ones. So that's one of the reasons I kind of dove into the uh, breach arms again. I bought this before we were ever doing anything. So, you know, I, I, I can like it and love it and say that I do because I do uh, prior to. So um, that is ambient here and also the fire selector is ambient. So if we go ahead and take a look here. So for me, typically, I will go on fire with my left thumb or sorry, right thumb and then index finger, pale back. Um, I very, very, very rarely do something like that. Just usually. Now, again, I have this Ambi because with it being a reviews gun, with it being a producer gun, I want to have enough, enough stuff on there that I can try different things and when manufacturers send stuff, I'm not like trying to rebuild the entire gun just to try their parts out. Um, but again, I don't like shoot much off the left hand shoulder. Um, my left eye is terrible. I'm so right eye dominant. So then a lot of times when I'm doing this, it's simply just, you know, a shoulder roll or something like that as opposed to actually like a true left-hand transition. But if I need to, I can use the safety left-handed um, with the, the Ambi. And also what's nice too is if I'm ever holding this thing left-handed, I can still pull the charging handle because it's an Ambi. And then of course too, there's those times that you just, oh, let's check it out, let's see what's going on, do press check or whatever. And then I don't have to go over on the other side into it. I can just do it from the other side. So, Again, I think they're great products. There's other ones out there that are also really good. Um, you know, like the NLA is one of them I've had for years. Check them out, but um, definitely check out the Breed, Ar Breed Arms because, again, I have uh, four or five of these that I bought prior to doing anything with them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a believer. All right, so from there, we have just the V7 Tate down pins. And these are really just more money than anything. Um, they're awesome. They're nice and lightweight, but you don't need them. And then the grip is just a BCM. I think it's a Mod Zero, and it's got different back straps and front pieces and this little part here you can actually exchange for a different part to cover up the little hole in the trigger guard there that constantly rubs your knuckle and again you'll see on all my ARs I have some sort of enhanced trigger guard because I hate that scraping up against my knuckle it drives me insane so gotta get rid of it I realize again I'm trying to run through this guys because it is so hot <laughs> the fan is not doing anything but um Again, going back to the bolt release, we have a bad lever on this because a bad lever is on um, all my guns, and I love it. And it is, for me, by far the best way to run these guns. Um, yes, I can run without it, but it's it doesn't feel at all the same. Um, I, I just don't like it. And I've trained with it, yeah, it's probably two, 2013, something like that. So I've had a decent amount of rounds and decent amount of time on these guns to know that you know, this is something I, I can do and I can be safe with. Um, I don't know if people look for you and go, oh my god, your ND button. Yeah, no, if you do it right, you know. But anyways, teach their own, that's mine. Um, 
So I definitely love that. The trigger itself is smoky. It's a hybrid fire and uh, like two pounds, two and a half pounds. Um, just ridiculous. I mean, it's just, just so, so smooth. And um, they actually upgraded, we'll look at the internals at some point, but they upgraded the hammer spring. So the lighter the trigger pull becomes, the harder the hammer hits. So you don't have those ridiculous like primer strikes and stuff. Um, I, I can't say enough about these things. These are excellent, excellent triggers. The receiver is just a um, Detroit Gunworks. They're out of business. I think they only sell privately. They really screwed that up. But magazine release is V7, and this is literally the finest mag release that one can buy. Guys, I love MFT, I love Magpul, all those companies, but this, dude, it just fits your hand in the scallop. There's a video on that too. But it's nice and scallop there, and it just I, like it, it calls to your finger. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, I'm, if I'm ever going to get another extended magazine release, it's going to be the V7. It's just, there's no question at all. Um, yeah, so the Bolton stuff, we'll look at that later. Um, it is a Sharps Rifle Company, Reliable. Uh, they're Ballast Bolt Carrier. Uh, I think they call it Low Mass Bolt Carrier now. I don't remember what they do. Um, ben, slow down here, not Lucas. And then the optic here is <sighs> Vortex Strike Fire 2. And uh, this is my second one. I had one that uh, went down for the count when I was shooting it. Uh, it was one of the first ones I made, and the battery contacts like wore out. Um, and then I was shooting it for a while longer, and then Warcraft fell out of it. And then the whole control unit on the side, the whole um, like rubberized piece just fell off. So I wasn't very happy about that, but Vortex hooked me up with a brand new one, um, the Straight Fire 2. So I went from one to a two. So here's hoping that I don't have that kind of <laughs> issue with these. Um, but I mean, this this has been, the Straight Fire has been a component of my gun pretty much just before the channel, before the, the website and all that stuff. We've been running this thing for a long time. So, I mean, we'll see. <sighs> Boy, it's a, uh, it is red and green too, so for all those that need that. So anyways, we're moving out to the rail section here. Let's miss something cool. I don't think I did, maybe. All right, oh yeah, dust cover. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. V7, completely flat. I um, have to love it. There you go. Um, again, those are some that you don't need. Um, I got these parts for review and bought a couple from V7. But when you can kind of move away from the M4 type platform to do whatever you want, you have a lot of options. Um, I know that the, sorry guys, I saw so, this just one. Um, I know the um, UTG ones are pretty sweet. I know the strike arms, the strike industries are really, really sweet. Um, those you just pop like one pin and put them in. So not a big deal at all. But um, yeah, I would say that if you want to go to the product improved type uh, system, that you would go with the rail as long as you're comfortable with. Um, I see guys that are like, okay, I got a nine inch rail. So cool, you had a seven inch handguard and, a, and then a front sight post. So that nine inch rail is essentially like where your hand would have been anyways. Live a little bit, you know, just bring it out there a little bit. And go a little bit further. Have some more room to grab the gun out front because you'll notice with the um, M4 that I have, I cannot hold it that far out. It's just there's not enough room for it. And, you know, yes, this is more competition -y. sure. But my options are far more limited. I can still put that grip, vertical grip on here, and still be able to run that further out. So, um, yeah, anyways, the rail system is a lot of user choice. This is actually some Tricom system that was sent to us um, by Spear Manufacturing. Um, they were looking for vendors and reviewers overseas, or to them, we were overseas. Uh, so they sent out a bunch of stuff, it's, and it's pretty decent. It's held together for um, three years now, not too bad. Um, but, you know, obviously there's other options and American-made stuff, and stuff, but, um, but yeah, just having a nice, nice light M-Lock is really, really nice. And guys, if you're running M-Locks, even uh, Picatinny, Stop putting so much stuff on there. Like I took this whole thing was covered in like XTMs and rail covers and stuff, and it actually like weighed the gun down. You could actually like have the gun like just get fatter through rail covers. And I want to see what pounds. Yes, I know we're eight ounces. Um, but yeah, it was just like wow, this is ridiculous. And I started slimming it down and then going to some of the BCM uh, panels. And, and again, these are um, these are the same as these, but they've been cut down and modified by me to. Uh, take a little bit less surface area and then give you the same amount of grip. Um, so we'll be seeing more of those in the future, but they do lighten them out quite a bit because you're taking off like a third of the material on the outside. So, but yeah, underneath here is sadly an H bar. So I bought an H bar is <laughs> a heavy barrel for the AR. And I bought that a long time ago when I didn't know anything about guns. And I was like, oh man, this has got to be great. And I don't think about running them all day. <sighs> then you run them all day and you're like, oh shit, why did I buy this thing? Uh, it, is, it is insanely heavy. It is 
basically the biggest source of weight in this gun. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm constantly looking for a replacement, but a replacement that would work, you know. So I would like it like an 18 inch, something like that, and give it a little bit more. Um, as opposed to going back to another 16 that's just lighter. But we'll see how that all goes. Um, yeah, we'll see. So, um, yeah, underneath there is a clamp on style gas block. I don't know if you can see that. We'll try it though. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a little bit there. So, right there. Um, I probably should have gone with a different style than the clamp on, but also I was in a hurry and I ordered it. Um, it's, it's actually from Bree Farmers too. They also give you um, the gas tube with it. And this is an adjustable gas block, which I did at the same time I did an odor works on another gun. And the odor works fucking sucks compared to this thing. And again, yes, I'm chilling Brie Arms, but at the same time, I bought this before they even knew who I was. Um, and it, man, like tuning those two guns was night and day. Like I, I actually had to go find instructions to do the odor works because it's just nothing I did ever made anything different on it. With the Brie Arms, I was done in like 10 minutes. So, I mean, it was just pretty cool. So, um, that gives me a little bit of a softer impulse there. But of course, the gun is really heavy too, so that also happens. Um, there also for the uh, hand stop is just the keg uh, from DCM. I really like this thing. Um, there's also a, this is a tornado. They're, they're gonna kill me for this, but the guys from um, uh, Evolve 3D Printing have one and that is awesome. We'll do some more with it here, but it is probably my second choice next to the keg. Um, and it's just a 3D printed piece. It's freaking awesome. So um, yeah. Something like that I definitely like as opposed to having to have a vertical grip. Uh, I know some guys still run them. Um, there's different versions. Obviously, they can't do forward or backwards. And there was, oh, we put this on an SBR. Yeah, I know. Or, you know, an AR pistol. Okay, cool. It just it fits really good. It feels really good. I'm not going to change it up. Uh, so, moving forward from that, and I just get kind of hung up on that, is the Viking Tactics light mount. And these are on like three or four of my guns. And for a reason, I mean, they, they work wonderfully. I just mount them on the top to the 12 o'clock position over to the side, and then go ahead and that light. And I mean, if you look at where my hand is, I'm never changing my hand position. Just there. So this is an old primary arms weapon light. I think it's like 700 lumens. I bought those before they stopped making them. And uh, yeah, they're freaking sweet too. Um, yeah, and then up to the front there, we have another brake arms piece, and that is their single port brake. And again, this is something I bought before they knew who I was or sponsored or did anything. Um, I saw it, and the price was right. Their muzzle brakes and stuff are like dummy cheap, so they're like, I think it was like 12 bucks or something like that. I don't know if it was on sale, but I was like, yeah, I'm getting that for sure. So um, I like it. It's really blasty. Um, you know, my light needs a little bit of cleaning every once in a while, but. It, it does what it needs to do, and again, if you're shooting by yourself or doing whatever, it feels great. Um, if you have people on the line with you, yeah, it's not so good, but you know, they also make ones with a last shield, which are coming out. Uh, they're doing another version of those. So, um, again, kind of moving away from the standard uh, a triangle front sight post, moving to the longer handguard, moving to the different grip options, uh, the different lighting options, things like that, um, especially with the optics. I run this thing this far forward because. I typically have a magnifier that will sit behind here on the swing side, and that gives me a little bit more capability. Where with that one, it is a they have an a absolute co witness on that gun, and this is a lower one third, so um, I do have the mount set up to be a lower one third for the magnifier. So it gives me a little bit more options and good stuff like that. But realistically, um, there's not a whole lot else to say about these. I keep my batteries for my optic and my light uh, in the grip and uh, in the stock. And one thing that is important is on gun storage. You know, so this, I can put whatever I want in the grip. The stock obviously can't take any 2032s, so they go back here. But this will have like the 123As for the light and everything else like that. So, no, the other thing is, although I have QD points all over this gun, um, we are just running that, that little Kevlar strand there for a couple different reasons. One, to test it out and see how well it works next to the barrel. But also, I hate like the, the QD like mount, like rattling and stuff. I didn't know this sounds rattling, but when you have this gun under tension, this doesn't have a ball. Um, but yeah, and then so I can go ahead and use the, the footless loop on the buttstock and rope that through there. And it's been a really good system so far. And I've been able to put my QDs on the other guns that I have that need it. So I can use it. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much it, guys. I don't have a lot more to say. Um, take your choice as far as when you get an AR or you build one. I would recommend that if you are a novice or not so mechanically inclined, that first you buy an AR. That's what I did. I was like, okay, 
I think I can build these things. Let me buy one first. And I had one, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is complicated. Not once you get through it, but yeah, the first few times you look at things, you're like, holy shit, does this work? Once I got my hands dark, dirty and I kind of figured out what I was doing, um, then I just started building them for other people, building them for myself. I think I've built myself like 10 of them, something like that. Um, yeah, so it's, it becomes an addiction after a while, but definitely you have your options whether you want to do sort of an old school M4 type or you want to do like a longer uh, wrist type. Wrist grasp, it was really, ooh, um, and all that stuff. The choice is yours. So guys, how much you think in the comments, like, share, comment, and subscribe. We'd definitely love to hear from you. Um, all that hate mail, whatever you guys want to send, I will be working on some more videos for that. And uh, yeah, so we'll have some more stuff. I will put the link for the, the first video in here as well. And uh, you guys can check that out. And uh, yeah, other than that, that's uh, pretty much all I got for you. I'll stop staring off camera and just slam.